Well, good morning, and what is up, everybody? Keep AKA Gear Guy 231. It is Saturday, December 12th. It is the pseudo last game of the college football regular season. Um, looking forward to this one. I'm just going to just, this, we're going to get like straight to the point in the picks. Uh, this is a tougher slate, in my opinion, than we've seen in um, past weeks. We, you know, largely devoid of some of the bigger teams, the bigger names. Um, a lot of those games were canceled. So, um, you know, I think this, this, uh, this slate is going to test, like, your ability to research, um, you know, find resources like this, other websites, um, you know, your own research to get on some good picks. So I do hope that this helps. If you are enjoying all the content at FSI, bottom right of the screen, hit that subscribe button. We cannot thank you enough. And if you enjoy the video, also like, comment, all that good stuff. It really does help um, everything we are doing at FSI. And on this channel, everything we are doing for free for you. All right, let's get right into the picks. Um, you know, no different, nor like it's not a different week for me at all at quarterback. Um, if I can pay up, fantastic. Let me get some sort of dual threat. But if not, there's some guys in that mid-tier that I think can get me, you know, a value-based expectation when I need to. So Mac Jones, Derek King's obviously a phenomenal play. I actually prefer King to Mac Jones. Mac Jones, I just am very worried that uh, Bama can go up by, you know, 50 at half. Arkan uh, Arkansas is not very good. So um, it's not going to be if Mac Jones as well. It's going to be how long is Mac Jones able to do well for. Derek King has a potential shootout versus North Carolina. I mean, we know his rushing upside is elite. Uh, I think uh, Cunningham potentially is even – somebody I like even more. Now, I do downgrade him a little bit with the news that uh, Atwell is out, but since they lost Hawkins, um, Cunningham has really been their top running back as well, so 8,900 is fine. Um, I want to scroll down and just give go to my other um, top plays. So, my top play um, at quarterback and the guy that I know that I am building around in like a cash and optimal bill is Clayton Toon from Memphis, um, sorry, from Houston in a game versus Memphis that could absolutely shoot out. Um, Toon gives me Huge passing upside, so we see, you know, back to UCF as is, is high as 41 passing attempts, but is a very, very willing runner. Um, 10 for 120 versus USF. I'm um, very athletic guy, so I like Tune in that mid-tier 7,800 a ton. Um, I also think um, if you want to go back to the well, he had a terrible game. Um, what was it, last time out? Uh yeah, versus Indiana, but still almost got there was Tago Vailoa, uh, 7,400. Again, another guy that's going to give you rushing upside versus Rutgers, I think, is a match that he can take advantage of. I really like, and I'm petrified of it, but I really like Jordan Travis versus Duke. FSU has now been off what seems like a month. I am shocked that FSU has not found a way to get out of this game. It seemed like they had given up on the season. But Jordan Travis gives you elite rushing upside. And versus Duke, I even think he'll be able to do a little bit through the air as well. So I think Jordan Travis is fine as well. Uh, going down, Clifford, I, I think, is a really intriguing GPP play. I might be a little worried to roll it in cash. Penn State versus uh, Michigan State. While these are not the traditional of those two teams, that just sounds so bad to me. So I got to get over that stigma, but 6,400 for Clifford, who's a guy that coming into the season, you know, I would have predicted it'd be nine, um, 9,000 at this point. Um, let's see. Oh, I did skip over one guy I wanted to mention was Sam Hartman. Wake, versus, Wake Forest versus Louisville could absolutely shoot out. Sam Hartman doesn't give us um, huge rushing upside by any means like the other guys, but um, this game could absolutely shoot out. My, my shootout games are, um, Memphis versus Houston and um, Wake versus Louisville are games that I'm targeting a lot. And I do think that Miami versus UNC um, is kind of a sneaky shootout too. Uh, I, I don't remember the total. Maybe it's not a sneaky shootout. Maybe it's like a very high total. But uh, the hardest part about that is that a lot of those guys are price adjusted. And so like stacking that game up won't be that easy. Uh, final guy down the cheap range I want to mention just Noah Vidrell. Um, does give you some rushing upside, 5,400 versus Maryland, um, who, you know, that defense looked good versus Indiana, so that's why I pause a bit, but um, I think he's very good in play. All right, running back. Um, one thing, just the strategy-wise, I want to talk about, um, I think that 
I realized last week one of my biggest faults and my worst week of the season, but is that when we have the ability to spin down at running back and get the similar amount of carries as some of these studs, you know, that's probably what we need to do because some of these receivers um, can just absolutely take the top off of the slate. You know, we're going to get to see that in a minute with Smith, but um, I'm just going to be very cognizant of running back news and, you know, maybe if I can find a chance to spin down to do it. And here's the other thing I would say, especially this week, I don't think the running back class is so good that you jam in three. So often I think I'm finding out that receiver just has so much more upside. So, you know, DFS of 2017, 2018 is three running backs getting 20 plus carries, little receiving upside, plug them in, go print cash. And more and more, even in the NFL, we're seeing it, that if you can get these receivers right and play a receiver in your flex position, the ceiling on your lineup just increases so much. So just, just keep that in mind. With that, I do will say Najee Harris, obviously elite play at 9,200, probably gives you close to, you know, expectation of 30 DK, um, which if you have the value or you have the ability to get it, I have no problem doing it. Maribel is nice as well. Um, where I'm going to really start kind of my targeting is – uh, Javante Williams at 7,000. Big, big, big price adjustment. It's, um, what, two, three weeks ago that we had him at 9,500 for a swing down to 7,000. Um, look, he he does need touchdowns to pay off, but, you know, you have close to a 1,000 yard back um, for 7,000 that's, you know, potentially going to have over 20 touchdowns this season. I think that's uh, something that you have to strongly consider. Um, I like – Cameron Harris in the in the game too. Miami is just always a little bit tough because they do like to give all their running backs work. But 6,700, I think, is very fair. I'm um, the guy I am very much locking in on is Beal Smith. I'm guessing it's Cameron. I, I don't remember his first name, but um, I'm actually blanking too. Let's see if I can get it real quick on his backup. Uh, Walker is out uh, for the rest of the season, so that should open up a lot more work for Beal Smith, who's already been very good. Louisville is not very good. So 6,600 to get a starting running back in the game I love, I think is something I'm very, very, very keen on. Um, continuing to go um, through, uh, I think for GPP, I think Vidal um, from Troy is really interesting. He's very, very involved in the passing game. So, um, you know, it's a tough matchup, but I think that that is a interesting play um, to say the least. Uh, yeah, there's somebody I missed in between. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, there's definitely somebody I missed. Uh, Jashawn Corbin, FSU. Look, I, two FSU guys is two more than I expected, but they still have a lot back there. Um, and they don't necessarily want to throw the ball a lot. They do want to run the ball. So Corbin at 5,500 versus Duke. Um, you know, a guy coming in the season that they had really high hopes for. Um, so, you know, he's rested. So uh, 5,500, I think, is, is, is interesting, to say the least. I do want to keep an eye on the Penn State situation. For some reason, Lee would have missed. I think uh, Devin Ford at 4,900 is really, really good. I expect a lot of people to be coming down to uh, Moba Carr, um, 3,200 in that potential shootout versus Memphis. Um, who is it? Porter? I always forget these names. Yeah, Porter um, is likely to miss. Should put Carr – uh, so it should be a committee, but it should put Carr near the near the top to get the most carries in that committee. Um, so he definitely works for a play. And then the last thing I'll just say is Memphis. Uh, Rodriguez Clark uh, looks to be missing. So you know, are they going to be um, starting um, as a Martin, or are they going to go back to the well get Watkins carries again? Um, if it's a Watkins at thirty seven hundred, that's a lock and load. You know, let's keep paying attention to news, but. Even at 5,200, Martin is uh, fine to get exposure. And I'm sorry, 4,800 to get exposure to that game. All right. You can see I'm not like crazy about running back. I do love wide receiver. And I'm pretty darn sure you'll see me in cash and optimal cash games, optimal like single entry with four wide receiver. Um, Devonta Smith, if we can get there, I think that we should. I don't know if we can get there, but. Um, my God, this guy, look, look, listen to these yardages, 231, 171, 144, 203. That's the last four games, and now he plays an Arkansas defense, which is just as bad, if not worse, than some of these. His ceiling is absolutely insane. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if I can get there, great. If I can't, you know, I'll survive. Um, I think along those lines, if you can get almost up, but you can't get all the way, 
Austin is a really good consolation prize. Um, outside of the Navy game, which is just a brutal matchup, we know Navy just will slow those games down. Like, listen to these totals, 110, 173, 102, 121, 184, and 151. Whew. Yes, Austin is an elite play as well. So we got two true studs at the top. Um, but then, like, below them, I think we have a lot of good routes too. I think Roberson from Wake Forest is a guy I love. You know, uh, 125 yards plus in three of four games. Uh, and, again, versus Louisville, this could shoot out. Um, I like Demas. I think is really interesting. Rakeem Jarrett will be back, though. So – um, we should see Demas's volume go down a little. Um, I think that with the news of Atwell being gone, that Des Fitzpatrick is close to a must play. Um, eight for 182. Like, that's pretty tough. To, uh, uh, eight for 182 on the last game. I was like, hold on. I looked at that last night way too late, and they just copied the game log on there twice. But um, he should be um, option one and option two for uh, – for Cunningham in this game. So at the DB 800, I think if obviously DraftKings knew that Atwell was out, Fitzpatrick's price would be much higher. So let's take advantage of that pricing mistake. Um, Dykes, to me, is more GPP from Memphis. But again, if we want to stack up that game, I think it works. Um, Mechie is probably my best favorite way to get um, Alabama exposure. Now, look, you know, you go, I'm going to get Alabama exposure. And you didn't get Harris, and you didn't get Smith, and you didn't get Mac Jones. So just understand your album exposure that you're going to getting is not like elite plays. You know, it's definitely like a tier below. But I do think, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I do think that Mechie um, does give you exposure to a team that sh- could score 50 to 60 points, is supremely talented, and does is part of that air attack. So 5,500 I really do like. Um, there's Raheem Jarrett, who's, you know, again, I think I've said this before, but the top recruit probably in uh, Maryland history, electric, electric player um, in a soft matchup versus uh, Rutgers. I'm um, going down further. I think Washington is a phenomenal um, way to get Memphis exposure. Again, he is not Austin, just like Mechie is not Smith. Uh, Washington is not Austin, but he's still going to get, you know, close to double digit targets. Um, in a game that Memphis could score a ton of points for 5,100. Love for Evan Jordan at at 5,000. There's multiple plays in this 4K range, but I'm just not going to go over them. Um, If you want to get them, they're going to be on my – if you become a member at FSI, they'll be on my my player grid. I'm just going to highlight, you know, one last play uh, down here. There was one more, but I've already forgotten it. (laughs) So sorry. Um, But I do think that Braden Smith – has a chance now with uh, no Atwell to go back to this type of performance. Uh, I think Syracuse was the game that we Atwell kind of disappeared or didn't play, but um, Braden Smith should be get an elevated role. Thirty five hundred um, gives you a true cheap receiver value if you want to try to spend up for one of those studs. That'll do it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, again, if you're still around, haven't done it yet. Bottom right, please that subscribe button it helps more than you can imagine. And with that. I will let you, I wish you all the best of luck and say, see you.